this is Lori Alexander from The Transformed Wife, and I'm going to attempt to teach you all how to make sourdough fermented einkorn bread. And it's much healthier for you than regular wheat because it hasn't been hybridized. It's actually the superior ancient grain. And it's um, people who are gluten-free can eat it. People who even have wheat allergies can eat it and have no problems. It takes time and it's an investment. Um, it's a one-time investment. After that, you'll have all your supplies. So before I start showing you how to make the bread, I'm gonna show you the supplies that you're gonna need if you make it, especially since Black Friday is just around the corner, so you might be able to get things a lot cheaper. I'm also gonna tell you the price of what I paid for my things so you can kind of gauge what, how much you should um, spend. And the first thing I need is a cast iron crock. And this is, um, she said to get about 5.5, let me see, 5.5 quart one. I think mine's a six quart. It's, a, it's real heavy, really heavy, <laughs> pretty. <laughs> but um, you're gonna need this to make your bread in. And this is, this was one of my most expensive things. Two things were really expensive. I'm sure a lot of women have these, but I did, I've never had one. So um, mine cost me $46. So um, you probably can find them cheaper than that, maybe with the Black Friday coming up, but some of you will watch this long after that. So um, you're just gonna you know, maybe borrow one from somebody to try out to see if you like making bread first. And the second most um, expensive thing is this weight, this scale, because you're gonna have to use this a ton. And my sister said this is the best brand. It's called an Oxy good grips and it's 11 pound scale see right there that's what it looks like and and it makes it so easy to measure everything um it what you do is you turn it on and then you, you put like you will be measuring things in this bowl and then you're going to put it to zero after you put this on then you're going to push it to zero and it and then you pour in 65 grams of flour and then you're going to push it to zero again then you put it pour in 65 grams of water all there is in this bread is flour and water, and that's it. It's so easy, so easy. Fermented, and it's so yummy. Another thing you're gonna need to have is a dough whisk, and this was $10 on Amazon. I bought almost all of mine on Amazon. You're also gonna need a glass bowl to um, put all your um, dough in to start it, to mix it. I'll be showing that as we go along. I got that at Target for about $8. Yeah, I think it was $8. You're going to need heavy duty oven mitts, mitts because this is going to get, you're going to be putting your oven to 500 degrees. And so, and another thing you need is an oven thermometer. I don't have one and I, my oven's 19 years old, so I'm going to have to get one because I, my bread was just a little bit underdone um, the first time I made it. <laughs> I should be, you know, have practiced a lot before I make a film, but I just decided to just jump right in it's not that difficult my mom, my sister's given me um, extra steps that I didn't even need to do so anyway these extra strength heavy-duty oven gloves and I paid 15 16 dollars for these and then you're also gonna need a, a dough scraper or a bench knife and this is stainless steel they always want you to use glass stainless steel or wood a natural product because you don't want plastic in your food and this was 476 on Amazon then you're gonna need these, what, these are called brat forms. They're little bowls and you're gonna be using these to put in your bread in for your final rise in the refrigerator overnight. You're gonna put a towel in it, a little cotton towel. You're gonna need some cotton towels too, 100% cotton. I got these at Bed Bath Beyond for like $4 for six of them. And you're gonna put these in, your, in these little brat forms like this and then you're gonna put rice flour in there and you're gonna set your dough in there. And you're gonna put another cloth over it to rise overnight. So these are really nice. And at really expensive food stores, like La Cuisinart or whatever, they were $30, my sister said. And I bought them for $10.95 a piece on Amazon. So, and then you, okay, I said a dough, you de, did I say a dough? dough <laughs> a dough whisk, this is $10 from Amazon. I think I already told you that. And then you're gonna need just a little jar, and this is for the Levon, like a little ball canning jar, white mouth. And you, my Levon will be, I'll make that tonight, and it's gonna be what starts the bread. Um, that's from the starter, I use, the, make the Levon from the starter, and the night before I make my bread. And you're gonna, it, it comes up to about here, you mark your, your 
jar like that. And then in the morning, it'll be um, doubled, at least doubled. And that's what you, you wanna make sure that it's doubled before you use it. So you're just gonna need a jar. You're also gonna need one of these. I got this for, this is a half a gallon size and I got it at Target for $5. It wasn't very much. And this is where you're gonna put your starter when it's on the counter and you're gonna feed it every night. You're gonna put it on your scale and you're gonna put um, a quarter cup of flour and a quarter cup of water every night and mix it and then cover it. But then after you make your bread, you can put it in the refrigerator for a week. You can leave it up to a week because you don't want to feed it every day. And then before you want to make your ne next batch, you have to take it out a day and a half before to get it going again. It's pretty easy. But this is the starter. Starters are hard to make. You're going to want to try to find someone who makes sourdough bread and borrow, uh, ask them to give you a, a half a cup of their starter. That's all you're going to need because it's difficult to um, produce. So, um, and it doesn't matter if you don't use organic ingredients because it, it's fermented so long and it used so little bit of it that um, you just need a good starter. That's, you find, check around, um, get onto a Weston A. Price group maybe, and maybe someone in your area has a starter's making nine corn bread even. And then you're gonna need some 100% whole wheat flour. And then you're only gonna use this for your starter. That's it. Um, so, like I said, it's just a little bit and it's going to be fermented. So by the time the bread's made, it's just a small little portion. Then you're going to need to buy your iron corn flour. This is what it looks like, all purpose. I made the mistake of using whole wheat. I used, the, when I made it the other day, I, I used whole wheat in mine. So mine turned out darker and denser and heavier than my sister's when she used all purpose. She was, when I, she saw that I've used all, whole wheat instead of all purpose she was excited to see what it tasted like and she loved it so um she said she might be fooling around with more half this and half whole wheat but this is what she used einkorn wheat it's the only wheat that's never been hybridized so that's why it's so much easier to digest it's easier on your gut and um, people you know just have so much gut problems and gut begins and ends in the health in the gut health begins and ends in the gut so the the what you anything that's fermented um, um fermented, soured, uh, soaked is better for you than just plain. And that's, like I said, the ancient grain. You're gonna need some, known as the ancient grain, how it was before it's been hybridized a million times, and that's why we have so many leaky guts and bad guts in our country and so many health problems. So the rice flour you're gonna need to get, and you only need that when you're ready to put your bread in these, you put the cloth in and then you sprinkle the white rice flour over so it won't stick. So that's the only reason you need that. And I think that's about it. I think I've got everything that you need. Um, so if you're interested in this, it is a commitment. My sister makes it once a week and I'll probably make it once a week. My daughter wants me to give her a loaf, so I probably will because Ken and I won't eat all, you know, two big loaves in a week. So anyway, it is a commitment and it's a financial commitment beginning after that. It's not because it's only just the flour and the water. But if you, and you have to be home a lot. It's because like yesterday, I'm gonna start my Levon tonight. I'll show you how my, I make my Levon from the starter. And that's really easy. And then tomorrow I need to be home six hours straight in order before I put my bread in the refrigerator overnight. And then I'll cook it on Thursday morning and I'll show you that. So I'll be done by Thursday morning. It's a, it's, so it's a long process. It's small little steps. It's not that involved. It's quite easy. So if you are willing to do that and you're willing to invest, you will have to make a little bit of a financial investment. But if you love bread and you want the best bread for your family's health, this is the way to go. So um, I'll see you tonight. Bye-bye. Okay, it's the night before I'm gonna make my bread. So I'm gonna make the Levon that starts the whole process of raising the bread. So I'm going to put, turn on my little weight machine. Then I'm going to put this on and press it to zero. And then I'm going to take 25 grams of my starter. It's really sticky. So you just put it in there until it weighs 25. And it doesn't need that much. It's really <laughs> quite amazing how little it needs. So 25 grams. I've got 13 so far. 15, 19, 21, 22. Just needs two more grams. So just a little tiny bit. 23, 
three, four, probably one fat five. Okay, I'm a little uh, over it. Oh well, it's 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 not an exact science. You can flub and it still work out really good. Right now, it's going to take 75 grams of spring water. So I'm going to press it to zero, and I'm going to add 75 grams of spring water. You just pour really slowly until it hits 75. Okay. Oops, okay, that's 78, I went a little bit over again. Press it to zero again. And now I'm gonna put in um, 75 grams of flour, all-purpose organic flour. Okay, so this is gonna be Levon, and I'll make my bread tomorrow. 57, 58, 70, okay. All right, so I've got it, then I'm gonna turn it off. My sister said, don't mix on your counter, on your machine, because it will wear it out. You just mix it really well, like this. It's really gummy, see? And then you wanna take a little spatula and get all the sides off, like that. So it's really sticky, so you want to keep it together as much as possible. Okay, now you just pat it down like that. And see, it's at the line, the line that I made. So now I'm going to cover this with a towel, a little cotton towel here, until tomorrow morning. And then I'll start the process of making the bread. So see you in the morning. Bye-bye. Good morning. It's morning, I'm still in my pajamas. <laughs> but I wanna start my um, day making this bread because it takes a six hour process. And what I forgot to do last night is I forgot to put my starter, here's the starter. And when, I'm, when I've taken out enough to make the Levon that I'm gonna use my bread, what you do with the starter is you just pour some into a mason jar like that, because you don't want to feed it every night. You don't want to feed it a quarter cup of um, flour and a quarter cup of water every night. So you, I'm just going to put it to bed in the refrigerator. So I just, I get these lids from Target, and, you, and so you just put the lid on that. And then I'm just going to put this in the refrigerator when I'm done showing you this lesson right now. Okay. I have directions for all of this, and it's a little different than where I bought this, but I'll give you the directions. I'll give you the link where I bought it when I'm done. Okay, so what you want to first do is you want to turn your, your weight thing on, and then you put your bowl, your big heavy bowl, glass bowl on it, and you're going to put it to zero. And then you're going to add 650 grams of water to this large bowl, okay? So 650. Hopefully I put enough in this thing. I'm getting close. I'll really spill at the end. Okay, 652 close enough. I'm not a perfectionist. And then you're gonna drop a tablespoon of the Levon into the bowl and see if it floats. Okay, here's my Levon from last night. See, it's more than, more than doubled. So it's, it's, but what you're gonna do is you're gonna drop a tablespoon into the water and to see if it floats. And I'm sure mine's gonna float because it's definitely ready. Okay, come on. It's sticky. Uh, I'm going to help it with my fingers. I'm going to need a towel. <laughs> okay, see, it floats. I hope you can see that okay. All right, so then then the, we were going to add the rest of the Levon. Since it floats, I'm going to add the rest of this Levon. And all this is is the starter, flour, and water. And it acts as your yeast, but there is no yeast in it. So it's a lot healthier for you. It's been fermenting everything. Okay, so I've added all of my, all right, I'm gonna be using this, the, um, the 
einhorn whole wheat. You can use um, any spread. You can use spread salt or whatever you want, but I'm using this. Okay, I used 200 grams of this, this um, einkorn whole wheat. Okay, so I'm gonna set it to zero. Okay, did it say to mix that in? I'm sorry, I should have read my directions. No, it just said to, let's see. Oh no, it did say to mix it in, sorry. <laughs> Still learning. Okay, you just take your little whisk here and mix it in. My sister said I'm supposed to take my bowl off of this. Take your bowl off of the machine, the weight, the scale when you do this. It's, but since I'm just doing this once for the film, I'm not going to take it off. All right, so that's mixed in. This is a pretty little handy gadget. I'm going to set it back to zero, and I'm going to add 200 grams of this. Okay, 200 grams. said it's, a, it's not an exact science if you go a little over or a little under I mean okay that's 204 it's close enough okay now I'm going to add 300 grams of my all-purpose line so I'm going to set it back to zero and add 300 grams of this okay I'm use big scoop it's first okay that's 117 153, 300 grams. I have to keep saying it to myself so I'll remember. <laughs> like I said, I have a short-term memory. Okay, 240, 273, I'm getting close. Okay, 297, okay, that's close enough. Okay, so now I'm gonna mix this really well. Mix this with this. I know I'm gonna take it off my scale this time because I don't want to ruin my scale. I'll be my sister. <laughs> okay, I mix that really well with this little thing like this. The little whisk. All these things that make it a little bit easier, handier. Okay, see it's looking like this. Sorry, it's not a little bit brighter out, but it's we see it's 640 here, and the sun hasn't quite come up, but it's getting light outside. So I thought it was time I could start. All right, now you're going to add the remaining 500 grams of the einkorn. Okay, so I'm going to put this back up on my scale. Put this back up on my scale, put it to zero. And now I'm going to add, I'm going to make sure I get the all-purpose one. Last time I used the whole wheat and it still turned out okay. I used the wrong flour and it still turned out okay. All right, 500 grams of this. Okay, so it almost takes a whole bag to make a bread. So the, the cost of bread after you buy all the supplies is really just the cost of one of these. And it makes two loaves of bread. Um, and they're pretty filling really actually very filling a lot of bread kind of um, I guess it's quite filling but this is really filling and really satisfying so you don't need to eat a lot like I've been eating two little pieces for um in the morning with eggs and it, it's a little bit too much <laughs> okay that's 501 okay now I have to mix this well with hands so I'm gonna turn this off for a second and I need to put this over at my table so I can really get in and dig and take okay, off my over to the table because it's down farther and I'm t I'm quite tall, but my calendars are tall. Take off all my rings. I did um, slam my finger in the sign glass door the other night, if you've noticed that. Oh boy, that was painful. So you get your fingers in here. This is a great thing to teach your daughters to how to just feel their food. <laughs> <laughs> they probably love it, your young ones. Teach them young. Have them with you all the time while you're working. It's good for them to know how to work hard in the kitchen, preparing really healthy food. 
one woman asked me to show you how I make my um, regular bread with yeast that, that I make for Ken and my uh, my son-in-law. He, um, they actually, my daughter actually wants to learn how to make this, but she's gonna have a baby soon, so she knows that she doesn't really have the time to learn something new like this. Um, with having a new baby coming coming in a couple months, but her hu husband is gluten intolerant, and he's able to, I found some sprouted spelt flour, he can't have any gluten, and wheat's not that great for him either. So I tr found some sprouted spelt flour at the health food store, and I made my regular I used to grind my wheat and everything. I still have wheat to grind, but now I could buy sprouted grains, which I think are just better for you. Anything that's sprouted is easier to digest. And he loves the sprouted spelt flour. In fact, my daughter has to make it for him every every three weeks because he loves it. He's so happy. Because the, the um, gluten-free bread you buy in the store is not that great. They haven't been able to find anything that is any, and besides homemade bread is by far the best. So you just want to get this really mixed in. I'm hoping you can see this okay, because if not, I'm, I don't want to have to make another batch of this for you guys. <laughs> okay, but you just get it really in a nice ball, get all the flour on the side. And, and like I said, nothing has to be perfect. When my, mom, my sister's made this for a long, long time, and she's never, had a failure. That's the same with my bread that I make too with yeast. I, I've made it for many years and I have it down. I don't even need to, hardly need the recipe to look at it anymore. Okay, I'm just gonna get this off my fingers. I think I'll do that after I, but, but here it is in the bowl. And then I'm just gonna cover with a towel and let it rest for 30 minutes. And then I will be back with you then. Okay, it's been sitting for 30 minutes. So we're gonna take this off and we're gonna put this back on the scale right here. And we're gonna set it to zero. And then I'm gonna add 30 grams of Celtic sea salt or real salt or a, just a good air dried sea salt. So I'm gonna add 30 grams of that slowly. This is a kind of coarse salt. Usually I use a little bit finer salt, but um, you could add 20 grams. It says 20 grams. My sister added 30 grams. So it depends on if you like things more salty. I'm gonna add about 23 grams. And then you're gonna add 50 grams of water. So I'm gonna set it back to zero. So I add 50 grams of water now, which isn't that much. Slowly, just pour real slowly. If you can't take water out, it'll be a little difficult. Okay, that's 50 grams. And now you're gonna do mix by hand, so I'm gonna take it off this. My rings are still off. Move this over here. Okay, now you're gonna mix it for hand, by hand for one to two minutes. And you're gonna do a gentle pulling. What you're gonna do is it's called, they say that gently punching the dough into the center and using a five finger pull. So what you do is you punch in the center and then you just five finger pull it up. Like I said, none of this is an exact, it doesn't have to be perfectly done exactly. I don't know why they have these certain funny little pulls like punch, pull, punch, pull. And you just do that punch, pull, punch, pull like this. Can you see that? Punch, pull, five minutes, just to get it all incorporated, the salt, the sugar. And this is kind of the kneading that you do. Instead of having a machine like for my bread, I'm gonna show you that I make with the yeast. I have a Bosch machine that does all the kneading, but this gets you, us more involved in it. So then you just do that for a couple minutes, and then you're gonna cover it and let it sit for 30 more minutes. And that's okay, all we are going to do a series of stretching and folding. And it's gonna be a two hour process, but it's really simple. And you do it every half hour, you're gonna do this to your bread. Okay, it's, it's got a wet appearance. It's kind of 
um, it's sticky and wet. So what you're going to do is you're going to get your hands wet, have some good filtered water. Always use filtered water. We use have a reverse osmosis, but you don't want to use chlorinated water in your bread. And all you do is you take, go up to the 12 point, stretch it and back, turn it one quarter way, go to the top, stretch it and down, turn it one more quarter, stretch it up and down, and then one more quarter, stretch it up and down. And that's all, that's all you're gonna do. Um, and I'm gonna come back in a half hour and do the same exact thing. And then I'm gonna come back another half hour and do the same thing. And then another half hour. So you're just gonna do a total of for two hours. And it's, it just takes that quick of time. And so I'm not gonna show you each of those steps, but I'll be doing that and I'll come back in two hours to show you the final step before you put it in the refrigerator for the final um, rise overnight, the final final fermentation. So see you in a couple hours, bye bye. I'm sitting here for two hours and I've flipped it every half hour, just like this. I'm gonna do it one last time. I started at nine on this, pro seven o'clock this morning, and now it's nine. So I'm gonna just do one more. You take it the top, bottom, flip it a quarter, top, bottom, and the top, the bottom, and then the top, the bottom. And then we're just gonna let it sit here for, for two to two and a half hours before we do the final step and when we divide it and put it into the brat forms and put it in the refrigerator for a night, for the night, overnight and cook in the morning. So you're just gonna cover it with a towel like that, let it sit there for two hours, and then um, I will be back and show you the final step, which is very easy. <laughs> this has been wait sitting here for two and a half hours now, and so it's ready to divide and put into my brat forms. So I'm gonna stand up, because I'm not that short, and you know what? I shouldn't have put this right, the towel right in. I should have covered the bowl because it stuck all over my towel and made a mess, but oh well. Okay, now what you're gonna do is you're gonna dust this well with the iron corn. That's what I used. Okay, and you're gonna put this on it. very sticky <laughs> still very sticky but that's the way it's supposed to be okay all right now you're going to roll it in a little bit of the flour so it's not quite so sticky there's, there's not much you can do to get rid of so much stickiness but put a little bit more flour on it like this which helps see that it's definitely Okay, then what you want to do is you want to cut it in half with your dull knife. So now you have two breads. So now you're going to shape it. And how you do that, I'm not, I mean, I, I am kind of an artist. I do, I, I love anything having to do with drawing and writing and, and everything, but when it comes to things like this, <laughs> I'm not quite so particular and I'm hoping it's not going to stick here. It's still quite sticky. And okay, and what you want to do before that, I forgot to say, which is a very important step, is you take with my very dirty hands, <laughs> okay, you take this rice flour and you put it in a little sifter thing like this. And you take the other half fine corn flour, kind of mix it up in there. And you want to really dust these forms, forms before you put them in like this. Really dusty. Now, I'm not going to put them right into these forms because you don't want to clean these forms. So my sister taught me to do this instead. You just put the towel up the 100% cotton towel in there instead, like that. Okay, now, <clears throat> you're supposed to shape this like, smash it down like this, and then, um, and then raise it up like that, and on that side, 
and then on that side, and on that side, like that. And then you're supposed to put it into your form. And hers is always much prettier than mine. <laughs> of course. <laughs> but you know what? It still will taste good. <laughs> you know, I'll probably get better as I, um, like with the bread that I, I'm going to show you how to make my normal bread. And I've been making that for many, many years. So I'm like a pro at that bread. But you know what? I still do it the lazy way. I don't make it real beautiful. And, you know. So you just put it up, down, fold that one this way, fold this one this way, and then you want to put the seam up. So you just put it right in there like that. Okay, and then pinch, pin, you're supposed to like pinch it together, but mine just kind of falls apart. So then what you want to do, let me just see if I can wash off my hands a little bit. I'm not going to be able to, and I, I have very, very messy hands. <laughs> okay, what you want to do is you want to put a lot of this on top of the breads so the towel doesn't stick like it did mine that I showed you. <laughs> I mean, just be really generous with this stuff so then it won't stick in the morning. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna cover it, put it to sleep, put it, make it nice and warm in there, and you're gonna leave this out on the kitchen counter for an hour noonish now it's a little afternoon so after about 1 15 I'm gonna put them in the fridge I mean I'll, I'll put it in the fridge and then I'm gonna leave them there <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I'm gonna leave them there for overnight and then I'm gonna be back and I'll cook it I'll cook it in the morning and I'll be able to show you what they look like and go through the process of cooking them and it's um, they're very pretty and they taste great and you're gonna absolutely love them and I'm your family will too. So see you in the morning. That's one other thing that I wanted to um, share with you because I'm going to be giving you the link underneath this video where I bought the instructions for $5 to, on how to make this bread. But the bread I'm making, the einkorn, is a little bit different than the bread she, uses, she makes. She uses regular wheat and so it takes 36 hours of sitting in the refrigerator. Well, the einkorn only takes overnight. So you have to remember that. And then also, when you, when you buy the directions on where it says build the dough here, um, iron corn doesn't need as much water. So she says that you're gonna need 775 grams of water, but you only need 650 to 700 grams of water because iron corn doesn't need as much water. And then I think, then the other thing that my sister taught me from experimenting with this is that she, um, remember after I flipped it four times, you know, that did that two hour thing where I flipped it and then I just let it sit there for two and a half hours. Well, after she has a step in there where you have to divide the dough and have it just sit on the counter for an hour. My sister just completely cut that out. She says you don't need that. So you just let it sit in the bowl for two and a half hours and then you take it to the counter, cut it and then put it right into the, the um, forms as I, as I did, which makes it shorter. So, and easier, so for two and a half hours, you can go out to go do some shopping or something. You don't have to be there. So, the, the entire six hours. So, those are two different things that I can think of. Is, if I can think of anything else that she did differently, I'll let you know. But just know that with Einhorn, there's less water and much less time that needs to be in the refrigerator because it's already naturally digested. It only needs to be in the refrigerator overnight instead of for 36 hours. So, anyway, see you in the morning, <laughs> unless I remember something else. <laughs> Okay, it's morning and I'm cooking the first loaf because I just want to have one last um, one last little video. So I'm, it's ready and I'm going to take it out and I'm going to show you it and then I'm going to show you how to cook the other one. Okay, what you have to do is you have to heat up your oven to 500 degrees before you start. And this is what it looks like. I'll dump it out here. There it is. See that? Nice and crunchy. And, um, it's just wonderful. <laughs> so anyway, you want to sprinkle some of these flowers into this pan. I already have some in here from before because you don't want to, to stick. You take out your bread from the refrigerator and when you heat up the oven to 500, you want to make sure this is in your oven heating up with the bread. 
So you just dump it in there like that. And then you take a razor blade like this, just a simple razor blade. And you want to just make a couple marks across the top. You can't even really see mine in this, but it doesn't matter. It's just so it can breathe. And some people are really artistic and make beautiful, beautiful ones. And then you want to put the lid on it. And you want it to be in the oven. Make sure your oven's at 500. And you want it to be in the oven. Oven for 20 minutes with the lid off. So you want it to be in the oven for 20 minutes with the lid on at 500. And then you turn it down to 465 for the last 10 minutes. And this is what the bread looks like. And it's all I can tell you that it's wonderful. <laughs> You'll have to taste it. And so if you if you condense all the steps together, it's not that much work. It's just you need to be around to have the time to do it. But it's very worth it because it tastes wonderful and, and it's good for you. And it's not that and it's pretty cheap once you have the, all the supplies like to do is buy the flour. So anyway, off to have some bread with some eggs. <laughs> I hope you enjoy this and if you have any questions at all, please just ask them below this YouTube and I'll get back to you. Bye-bye. <laughs>